Here are five reasons to support the annual Catholic Appeal. One, emergency assistance to those in need. Two, inspiring young people to grow in their faith. Three, keeping our homebound connected in the faith. Four, crisis help for young families. And five, Catholic education, forming our future leaders in mind and heart. We are sowing the seeds of God's love with your contribution. Please donate today online at diospringfield.org. friends and welcome to your Chalice of Salvation program as together we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you for tuning in at this early hour of 6 a.m. I'm your Chalice host, Passionist Brother Terence Scanlon, welcoming you to our Studio Chapel of the Holy Spirit here at St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield. One day a tiny seed of faith was planted in you. Perhaps parents planted it when you were just a baby. Perhaps it was a priest, sister, or layperson who witnessed to their faith at just the right time. As we pray with our faith community, we listen to God's word and receive the Lord in the Holy Eucharist so that our faith may be increased, exercised, and strengthened for our life's journey. Today, we welcome back to our studio chapel, Father Warren Savage, who in addition to his campus work at Westfield State University, also assists in our permanent diaconate program. Welcome, Father Warren. Our Mass intention this day is offered in loving memory of Stanley P. Manjack, the beloved grandfather of my colleague Liz Gollin, on this, the 30th anniversary of his death. We welcome members of the family as our congregation and altar servicers this morning. Jennifer Gaffney from Sacred Heart Parish Community here in Springfield will be our music minister. And friends, as we do each week, we offer our heartfelt best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Sending our congratulations to Mary and Andrew Flanagan from South Hadley on their 67th wedding anniversary. They are the proud parents of six children, 23 grandchildren, 23 great-grandchildren. We join with all of them in wishing you both the very best as you celebrate this special day. And friends, as we do each week, we also keep in our prayers the intention of those who are ill or homebound, especially those watching this broadcast from your hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. We remember all in our prayers this day, including those dedicated people who care for your needs. And today in our Book of Remembrance, we will list the names that you have submitted of your faithfully departed loved ones. May these souls and all the faithfully departed rest in the peace of our risen Lord. We now turn to Jennifer Gaffney for our opening hymn of gathering and greet Father Warren Savage and together celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit be with you all. And so we thank God for this beautiful day, for the gift of life and the gift of love. We pray in this liturgy that our world might come to a place of greater unity and mutual understanding. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you gather us into your kingdom of love and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gather us into your kingdom of peace and reconciliation. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you promise those who follow the way of your kingdom eternal life and happiness and joy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will honor the Holy One, you will honor the Lord. You will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, Strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather not leave the body and go to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away, for we must all appear before judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. It is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you, our God, it is good. It is good.
no injustice could be found. It is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you, our God. It is good. It is good. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it. Every winged thing in the shape in the shade of its bows and all of the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land. It would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wheels the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. During the week, I had a conversation with a dear friend who was depressed about the current condition of our nation, the world, and life in general. She talked about all the pain and suffering of the poor throughout the world, the conflict in the Middle East between the Israelis and Palestinians, the increase of gun violence in our communities, the deaths of young people by drug overdose and suicide the racism and prejudice towards Asian Americans, people of color and gay persons, the political polarization, social chaos, and intolerance towards people from different cultures, and the universal sense of disrespect and disorder everywhere. She asked the piercing question, where is God in the midst of all this upheaval and turmoil? I told her that God is present within her heart. The kingdom of God is within her. Many of the followers of Jesus have a difficult time recognizing and accepting the reality 
of the kingdom of God that has been planted within their hearts. My dear friend, like so many others, attempts to make sense out of what she sees and hears every day. But she is confused and disoriented by partisan news propagated by social media. And she is a woman of faith, but is having a hard time feeling or recognizing signs of God's presence in all that is happening. Everything in life seems to be falling apart. It's dark and hopeless. Mark's gospel was written for poor, illiterate people who lived in a time of social chaos and persecution. They wondered if their faith in Jesus would liberate them from their suffering and improve their lives. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks to the crowds in parables about the kingdom of God. He compares the kingdom of God to a man, a farmer who scatters seed on the land of its own accord. Uh, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, the farmer wheels the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. The focus of this parable is not on the man or the farmer, but rather on the transformative process of the seed, the seeding, the growing, the fruit, and the harvest. Jesus wants us, his contemporary listeners, to understand that the kingdom of God is a divine initiative, a divine work, and not a human achievement. Jesus invites us to participate and cooperate in God's divine plan. Although we do not completely understand the mystery of the kingdom of God, we must surrender to God's will and trust that God's kingdom will come to fruition in due season. The seed of the kingdom of God is within our hearts, and we have to hear it and transform it and become fully alive in the kingdom of God. No matter the human condition, the circumstances and situations of life, Jesus encourages us not to lose faith, but rather to nurture the seed of the kingdom of God by reading and meditating on the word of God, in daily prayer, in works of mercy. The kingdom of God within us gives us the inner strength we need to deal with the challenges and the struggles and hardships of life. We come to understand more completely that the kingdom of God is a way of life, as we abide in communion with Jesus, the crucified and risen Lord. Jesus also compares the kingdom of God to a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth larger branches and so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. Jesus' parable describes the kingdom of God as a reordering of creation in the world into a new reality. The kingdom of God is not to be misconstrued as an earthly kingdom defined and controlled by an economic or political or ecclesial power. The kingdom of God is a kingdom at the service of the least of our brothers and sisters. The kingdom of God is associated with those who are powerless, weak, vulnerable and lowly. And Jesus became human to be a humble servant of the people. He ministered to the poor, the outcasts, and the marginalized, because he himself was poor, treated like an outcast and marginalized. As followers of Jesus, our mission in life is to grow with one another, to become the largest of plants that puts forth branches of love, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, peace, and justice for those seeking refuge from injustice and oppression. The parable challenges us to become the kingdom of God for all people and allow God to use us for the building up of God's kingdom on earth. We are to understand that ultimately the development and presence of the kingdom of God rest on God's power alone. In God's kingdom, is an eternal and universal kingdom of truth and life, justice, love, and peace. We must reimagine our lives so that the kingdom of God becomes 
a real dwelling place wherein people from diverse walks of life can live in safety, security, without fear and violence, war, racial hatred, humiliation, or lack of food, where all people can shelter from the turbulent storms of life. Jesus wants us to understand that we are created in the image and likeness of God, called to become the kingdom of God on earth. We have been chosen to participate in the universal plan of God to build a beloved community in which every person is treated equally as a child of God. We pray this day that the seeds of the kingdom of God sown in our hearts will yield the fruit of love, the fruit of compassion, the fruit of peace, and empower us to create a human family in which all people feel welcome and truly at home in the Lord. May this be our mission and our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord lifts high the lowly tree. It makes the withered tree bloom. So let us lift our prayers to the one who raises and invigorates us. Our response to the following petitions will be, Lord, hear us. For God's holy people, that the witness we provide to the world may enable the kingdom of God to flourish and grow so that all living things may dwell in peace and harmony in its shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For leaders of nations, that they champion those who toil for justice and nurture peace, so that the seeds of justice and peace may bloom and ripen the world over, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. That we may respond generously and care to all who suffer from trauma of all kinds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all of us, that we may always be willing to help our family members, Friends, neighbors, and strangers carry their crosses, knowing that the Lord recognizes their weight and is always willing to share our burden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. We remember in prayer this day, Stanley Magic, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the names that you, our Chalice Viewing Community, have sent into us for today's Book of Remembrance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. God of all creation, you care for us at every stage of life, nourishing and strengthening us, impelling us to bear fruit. May the fruit we bear glorify you as it builds up your kingdom. Hear this in all our prayers and graciously grant them according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, and ever reigns the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you and your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all who serve your people throughout this world. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen to sleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At this Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not to our sins, but on the feet of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your and always offer this sign of peace to one another and spread that peace to the whole world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And for those who cannot receive communion with us here in person, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you and from your heart. Amen. God is 
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. about a railing on a balcony or a banister on a stairs because they keep people from falling off and falling down. You see, some limits are really good for us. They keep us from uh, being unsafe. So it is also with obligations. For example, I have to walk my dog. I'm obliged to walk Zelly every single day, many times a day. But that's beautiful because it also keeps me healthier. Such it is with our obligation to attend Sunday Mass, which I will be lifting the dispensation on Father's Day weekend, so that the obligation will stand at that point. Of course, it's not for those who are sick or unable to attend, but for the rest of us, if we can go, we should be going. But the benefit of that is every time we go to Mass, we encounter Jesus Christ, we get to be together, we get to celebrate the, the obligation and the, the goodness of keeping holy the Sabbath. So just because you're obliged to do something, it also means you get to do something. It's a way of understanding that when we give something of ourselves, we end up getting so much more. Thank you, and we'll see you on Father's Day. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. 
We establish orphanages and help the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. St. Michael's Academy, where a dynamic curriculum meets enriched learning. where morals are instilled and confidence is boosted, where lasting relationships are nurtured, and safety is priority. St. Michael's Academy. Springfield Diocesan Cemeteries now offer above-ground entombment at two locations in Springfield, St. Michael's and Gate of Heaven Cemeteries. Both Catholic mausoleums are open daily from 8.30 to 3.30. For more information or an appointment with our Family Counseling Office, call 413-733-6019. That's 413-733-6019. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. Here are five reasons to support the annual Catholic Appeal. One, emergency assistance to those in need. Two, inspiring young people to grow in their faith. Three, keeping our homebound connected in the faith. Four, crisis help for young families. And five, Catholic education, forming our future leaders in mind and heart. We are sowing the seeds of God's love with your contribution. Please donate today online at diospringfield.org. As I mentioned at the start of our program this morning, our Mass celebrant, Father Warren Savage, helps in the formation program of our permanent deacons. 
Back on May 22nd, the newest class of deacons were ordained here at St. Michael's Cathedral. Kathy Harrington has that story. Entering St. Michael's Cathedral on the eve of Pentecost, seven men ready to serve the diocese as permanent deacons. On this most joyful day, it is a great pleasure to welcome all the family and friends that have come. In a special way, uh, the eighth bishop, our Bishop Emeritus, Bishop McDonald, thank you for joining us this day. It's the culmination of a journey begun in 2016. Lawrence Channel, Brian Hunt, Mark Arthur Jean Mary, Daniel Pratz, Michael Prey, John Murray, and Jerry Sheehan studied at Our Lady of the Elms College two nights a week while working full-time and caring for families. Deacon Pratt says anything is possible when the Holy Spirit wants something. He's thankful for the support of his wife and his daughter. It, it was pretty intense. Thank goodness for my daughter. She's, she went to college and she helped me out through all the essays and all the computers. Bishop Byrne also gave thanks to the wives. Your husband's ministry should be an extension of the witness you gave and give first in your marriage. In the sacrament of marriage, husband and wives are to be a visible sign of how Christ loves his church. And we are to see in each one of your marriages an example of that love, a love that's healing and forgiving, a love that lays down its life for the other. Deacon Channel and his wife Sue work together through his formation, but clearly there is a third partner in their marriage. I have to say, when we first got married, he was not Catholic. And he, I, I quote him because he would say, we're going to do what we need to do so you can have your Catholic wedding, but there's no way I'm becoming a Catholic. And, and I think, in hindsight, I heard an audible laugh from heaven when he said that, because here we are today. So I don't know. You never say never with God, because God has the ultimate word. Important in their formation, the wives were also prominent in the ordination mass. Sandra Murray, wife of Deacon John Murray, shared the first reading in English. Then it was Sue Channel with a second reading in Spanish. Hermanas, elijan entre ustedes a siete hombres de buena fama, llenos del espíritu y de sabiduría, les confiaremos esta tarea. Mientras que nosotros nos dedicaremos de llena a la oración y al ministerio de la palabra. In his homily, Bishop Byrne told the candidates that he will rely on them to help build up the kingdom of God. I need deacons on fire to win souls for Jesus Christ in Western Massachusetts. You must pray every day, most effectively before the Blessed Sacrament. Prayer does not flow from ministry. Ministry flows from prayer. Calling the men forward, they promised to serve as ministers of the diaconate and promised obedience to the bishop and his successors. Saint Andrew. Lying prostrate before the altar as a sign of submission, the congregation sang the Litany of Saints, calling on all the saints to pray for and protect the men being ordained. Then in silence, the bishop laid his hands on the head of each just as the apostles did to the seven chosen men, asking God to empower them with the Holy Spirit. As the wives presented their husbands with the stolen dalmatic, the priest from the deacon's parish helped to vest the new deacons. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. With those words, the new deacons are entrusted as messengers of Christ. They will proclaim the gospel, preach the homily, assist the priest at mass, can baptize, witness marriages, perform funeral and burial services outside of mass, distribute communion, and are obligated to pray the divine office each day. Just as in the Acts of the Apostles, seven men were chosen to work alongside the apostles in daily ministry, these seven newly ordained deacons will take on a variety of ministries in the church. Deacon Brian Hunt is assigned to Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills, where he's eager to help Father Steve Amo perhaps start new ministries in the parish. 
heading to St. Joseph Parish in Shelburne Falls, Deacon Channel is looking forward to serving. Whatever it is that they need most from my service, whether that's, you know, I'll probably start visiting the homebound if they will like. And I'm looking towards also helping out with the prison ministry. Deacon Mark Arthur Jean Mary knows he is called to this ministry and is eager to serve his home parish of Holy Cross in Springfield. It's like every day on everything in your life, you feel like that's the way to go. And then you feel like Jesus calling you to serve the people of God. By tomorrow, I will be there. Like I'm always there uh, to serve. And then that one, it's kind of another, another step. Deacon Pratt's will serve in Chicopee at St. Rose de Lima. I'm looking forward to see what, you know, what the Holy Spirit's going to bring in our family and our lives. It was a great joy today to celebrate the first time I've ever uh, been privileged enough to ordain um, some men and, as a deacon and then for them on this joyous day. So it was a day just filled with lots of love and joy and the Spirit. Bishop Byrne sees the hand of God in his first ordination as a bishop. Yeah, there were seven uh, in the Acts of the Apostles that were chosen and then we had for this first group of mine uh, to be seven. So just the, 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 the gift of, of the Spirit, it's not a coincidence. There's no coincidences to people of faith. It's all providence. And God's teaching us something about getting back to the reality of the early church. This was also the first ordination for Dave Picard as director of the diaconate office. While crediting recently retired Deacon Leo Coughlin with this class of deacons, he says now it's his turn to get to work. We really haven't begun to throw the nets out, but the fact of the matter is we have 10 or 12 men that have already expressed a pretty significant interest in becoming a deacon. Recruitment sessions are scheduled later this summer in Pittsfield and Springfield for the 2024 class of deacons. Thanks to Kathy for that report and we look forward to welcoming the new deacons to our Holy Spirit Chapel. Thanks as well to Father Warren Savage for celebrating this liturgy for us today, to Jennifer Gaffney for sharing her musical talents with us, our sincere gratitude. And, fresh, and friends, just a note of reminder that our annual Catholic Appeal is still looking to meet its fundraising goal. If you haven't made your donation yet, please consider doing so online at dialspringfield.org, or you can call 413-452-0670 during normal business hours to make your gift. And remember that this televised Mass depends greatly on the generosity of donors to the annual Catholic Appeal, a ministry which has been making our Catholic faith available to those at home, not just through the pand pandemic, but for over 60 years now. And again, if you haven't made your gift, please consider doing so now, and we thank you in advance. And Father's Day is just one week away, and thanks to all who have already so generously responded. And friends, if you haven't sent in your list yet, please mail it no later than tomorrow to ensure it arrives in time. You can also log on to iobserve.org for a link to submit names to us in time for Sunday. And friends, before I say goodbye this morning, as Bishop Byrne has announced, the dispensation from obligation to attend Mass will end this week. I know that during the COVID crisis, many stayed home out of an abundance of caution. But now the time has come for all who are healthy and able to resume attending Mass in person starting next week. And while this means we might miss seeing some of you in our Chalice congregation, we rejoice in our returning back to better, as the bishop says, and in your return to home parishes. We thank you for blessing us with your presence these past 15 months, and for allowing us the honor of being your connection to the Catholic Church during these most difficult times. And asking you to join us next Sunday morning, back at our normal time of 10 a.m., as we celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time and welcome Bishop William Byrne as we celebrate as our Mass presider for a very special chalice celebration of Father's Day.
That's next week, right here on The Childless of Salvation, Your Spiritual Connection. And friends, wishing all God's blessings for this week ahead. Love to all. See you next week. God bless. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds, guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home.